So the next step is we're going to Clico our side skins, um, both the far rear side skin and the next one up. Um, when you Clico all these parts together, you want to make sure that you get as many of the holes to line up perfectly as you can. Uh, it's fairly tricky. There's a lot of parts, especially in this far tail section, that have to mate up and come together just right in order for it to uh, fit perfectly. And so there will be a little bit of uh, clear drilling along this step, but you know the goal is to minimize that. So definitely don't forget this uh, inside skin. It's a very small uh, skin that, that spans inside of here. That's gonna reinforce your tail section. Um, and then what I like to do is tilt the whole assembly onto its side to give you access to the, the bottom rivets down, down uh, here and do one side. And I did both side skins like that. And then I tilt it upright and kind of continue on and then tilt it on the other side to get these back skins on here. Um, well, the other side skins. And, uh, and then, like I said, you'll have to remove Clicos and insert Clicos. Try to use the hard mounting points as much as possible, like I've talked about in the other videos. Um, and just slowly, one Clico at a time, uh, bring everything kind of into alignment. And so, like I said, take your time, go through it with lots of Clicos, less Clicos, more Clicos, and just go through those iterative steps until you get to uh, the best alignment. And so now we're going to rivet the skins into place. So on these rear skins, um, I started by riveting the furthest rear skins here on both sides, and then we'll move forward and rivet the, uh, the forward part of the rear skins. Uh, a couple things to make note of. Um, just like when you're clecoing, you want to start with the rivets that go into the more substantial structures. For example, this horizontal rib here um, is a substantial structure, this rib. Also, the, the longerons on the bottom, just everything that's kind of critical for alignment, you'll want to do first. And anything that's slightly misaligned with uh, maybe some of the thinner ribs or uh, where a lot of things kind of made up and those tolerances stack up, uh, you'll need to clear drill those just slightly. But of course, you want everything to, <clears throat> the clear drill should just be a fraction of, you know, kind of just a deburring almost. So. Now that we've riveted all the, the furthest rear skins into place, we'll move forward and do the front ones. Um, also keep in mind, it's okay to rotate the entire assembly onto either side, uh, just to make it easier to access whatever you're doing. Also pay close attention when you're working back here, as well as moving forward, that when you push the rivet through, you're not actually bending up one of the rib tabs. Uh, you wanna make sure that the, the rivet is going through the skin and the tab on the rib and making a nice tight uh, closed connection on everything. So uh, let's move forward and get the the other skins on. All right, now that we've got the rear side skins all riveted into place, uh, there's a couple things to keep in mind. We're not going to rivet any of these, the farthest aft row of holes on either side of the tail here. Uh, those are going to have M4 bolts pass through to help uh, mount your vertical stabilizer later on. Um, also, of course, you don't rivet any of these top row of holes here. Um, you've got your longer on there, and none of these get riveted until your top skins go on. And lastly, don't rivet any of the furthest forward holes uh, anywhere the whole way around here. Um, on the bottom, there's two rows of, rows of holes that don't get riveted. Uh, the furthest forward, um, two rows of holes there. That's going to mate your center fuselage to your, your rear fuselage here. So, okay, so you may have noticed I proceeded to rivet the side skins onto the rear fuselage here before I ran the wire harness. Um, even though the manual does show the wires to be run first, uh, I personally think it's a little bit easier to get the structure of the ribs in place before you run the wires. You can do it either way, it's perfectly acceptable. Um, but as you can see here, on the left side of the fuselage, the right side of the screen, um, the top rib and the bottom rib, I ran the four core and the six core, which we're actually only going to use five of these wires for the trim servo and your tail strobe. And you just run them down your longerons and there's pre-punched holes that you can uh, fasten this stuff down with zip ties. Uh, you can, uh, as an alternative, use P clamps or Adele clamps here along the way and you'll just need to um, 
find a way for this wire to go around or underneath through here. Uh, I find that this, using some of this wire jacket, keeps everything really well protected and really well nested through here. And so at this stage of the build, you're gonna have to have a very clear idea of your full uh, avionics setup that you plan to use. Uh, basically, if you're gonna use a nav antenna, you're gonna need to run a wire down for your nav antenna up on your tail back there. Um, in addition to that, uh, this particular build has a comm antenna that I've run down this longeron and up through rib four here and it's gonna follow the Longeron up, and right here is where the comm antenna is going to rest, uh, at the top there. Uh, if you plan to use a GPS antenna on top of your rear fuselage, um, that's an option, and it's a good option. Uh, so you'll need to run a uh, coax cable for that as well and plan accordingly. Uh, once everything's closed up and finished, uh, you know the more parts you get in here, the harder it is to go back and redo that. So you'll want to uh, have that planned out ahead of time. So the next step is your rudder cables. And so the rudder cables are fairly straightforward. It all installs fairly easily. Um, as you can see, you get this box mounted in here, riveted into place. Then the only thing that you really need to make sure of here is that your cables do cross. So this is gonna be factory assembled, your, um, your plastic guides here. Here and here, as you can see, the rudder cables cross through this section here. And uh, it's very important that they do that, obviously, so you get correct rudder control. And you're just gonna rivet in your guides into place and go all the way through. Uh, one thing that I hold off on doing until a later step is, so you're not gonna tighten these down yet. Uh, you're not gonna tighten those down until final rigging. But uh, I leave these rivet nuts off until the rear and the center fuselages are joined. So that way you get a little bit more uh, rigidity on the final mounting location of this tab here. Because as you can see, you can get a little bit of flex. So we're gonna wait to install these riv nuts until the two, uh, the rear and center fuselages are joined. So um, I think that's it for the rudder cables. Everything else is fairly straightforward. So uh, let's move on to installing all of our baggage compartment hardware. So you can see here, I've actually uh, gone forward three or four pages in the assembly manual and actually only with Clecos assembled it all just to kind of get a, a general view of how things are gonna fit together. And this gives you a good opportunity to see basically which things need to be done first. The manual is in pretty good order, um, but there are some spaces where you'll notice by Clecoing it together here which holes are gonna be obstructed by adding which components. And so now we're gonna basically tear it down modularly and rivet them separately, just as the manual describes. So we'll do that now. So now with the uh, bulkhead skin clecoed into position, uh, you can cleco the top row of your bulkhead support channels into both sides. And you'll need to match drill the bottom holes uh, for both of them both on the front and the back. And you can rivet those into position and you'll leave unriveted the top rows on each side there until we get the uh, baggage extension in and the baggage floor. And uh, once everything's fitting up nicely, we can rivet those as well. Now it's time to install the baggage extension. And um, basically I assembled the entire uh, baggage extension box here uh, outside of the plane on the table and as you can see I installed the soundproofing around that as well as you can see I've got the soundproofing up to this rib here on the floor and the walls uh, of the side panels of the rear fuselage so you don't have to do this it's entirely up to you um, I think that it's a little bit better for you know sound insulation as well as temperature insulation uh, however, the kit does not come with enough uh, foam, adhesive foam to do this as well as the center fuselage. So uh, if you don't want to purchase more foam, uh, save this step or save this material for the center fuselage. So anyway, once you have it assembled, the, the box assembled outside of the fuselage, you can insert it through this rib um, up to your baggage bulkhead there. Um, once you get your rivets installed along this edge here to hold it in. 
uh, you'll need to match drill these along here down on the bottom of your uh, of this uh, bulkhead here and in addition to that um, you'll only have a couple mount holes along here that line up none of these holes will be drilled so once you've got that in place then you'll want to match drill these as well and then um, you'll shoot the rivets from the other side going this direction and keep in mind when you're assembling this box here you want to shoot the rivets from the inside of the box facing out so those tails aren't inside uh, on the floor or the wall or the, uh, the roof of your baggage compartment in the back wall there. The next step is to install the seat belt reinforcement uh, plate and cable here. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. Just remember that on the underside of this lingeron here, there's the reinforcement plate and on the top here uh, goes the seat belt uh, cable mounts. Uh, on the front end here, it's fairly straightforward as well. Just make sure to uh, flip this plate here in both orientations. It'll fit better in one orientation than the other because of the angle going through uh, this rib here and the mounting holes uh, location. So uh, keep that in mind and this part is fairly straightforward. All right, so now we're ready to uh, rivet our baggage compartment floor skins in place. Um, as you can see, I've got the uh, the bulkhead support channels riveted into place. I've also got the entire bulkhead riveted into place. You see the black Sharpie lines. I had Clico to head everything. Uh, just like I mentioned before, it's really good idea to always work as far ahead as you can with Clicos, uh, see what needs to be done, remove everything. And so by doing that, I marked out where the parachute compartment's going to go. Um, if you're not using this option, then you don't have to worry about this step. But if you are, like this current plane is here, uh, you'll want to know which rivets to not shoot just yet. And so that's what you see there. Um, also, I've got the soundproofing insulation done on the floor here. Uh, you'll want to stop it at this lingeron on both sides. Um, everything above that is going to be carpeted and nicely finished. That'll be exposed in the interior. Um, so if you are going to put the soundproofing in this section of the plane, um, you'll want to do that now before we've got our floor skins in and it gets a little bit more closed off in there. So we're now ready to uh, move forward and rivet those in. In order to properly match drill your baggage floor support channel here, um, the instructions give you measurements from the edge of the, the skin here. I find the best way to do it is to rivet or clico everything on your baggage floor into position so that it's nicely secured. Then also clico in your support channel here and find where it rests on your skin. From there, you'll be able to mark with a Sharpie um, where the holes go and then remove everything. Uh, use your smallest drill bit from the inside to drill the center of those marks then install everything again with Clicos and match drill it from the outside when you can see um, if everything's aligned uh, up to the 3.2 or 8th inch drill. Um, from there, we'll be able to proceed uh, with the rest of the baggage compartment floor. The last step for now is to install the parachute box. Um, as you can see, this process is fairly straightforward. The instructions do a good job of explaining how to install this. Um, it more or less just lines up with all the holes and everything should fit together nicely. So you'll notice that the, the top skins are off of the rear fuselage for now. I like to hold off on these until the canopy installation because that way we can wrap them nicely over the top of the canopy and make sure that everything's fitting um, without having to wedge the canopy in underneath those rear top skins. So for now, the rear fuselage will sit as is until it's ready to be joined to the center fuselage.